from KPRC Channel 2. This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. Good morning and welcome to this back to school edition of Houston Newsmakers. Depending on your district, school gets underway as soon as August 16th. And there are so many things to do to get ready, whether you're a parent or a student. Joining me are two people who are thinking about getting ready all year round. Carol Shattuck is the president and CEO of Collaborative for Children, an organization whose goal is to strengthen early education throughout the greater Houston region. And Mandy Kimball, the director of public policy and government affairs for Children at Risk. That's an organization that works to improve the quality of life for children in many ways, including education. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Hey, before we get going on a specific topic, I want to give you each uh, an opportunity for your elevator speech about what your organizations do. Carol? Okay. Well, Collaborative for Children, as you said, works really hard every day to improve the quality of the opportunities for early education for young children. We'll talk in a few minutes about why early is so important in terms of the lifelong outcomes of children. Mandy? Sure. Children at Risk is a research and advocacy organization, and we look at the whole child. So how can we support parents and engaging their kids in early childhood development, but also public education and health and nutrition as well? Hey, I, I go to your websites, both of your websites, and I could get lost. <laughs> I mean, I mean, wonderfully lost, because there's so much valuable information, which is good. We could start it in a lot of places. Let's start at the beginning where children begin to learn on the collaborative website. It says that 90% of a child's brain development occurs by the age of five, and that says a lot about the importance of getting all of our children going early. And on the Children at Risk site, it says that 76% of Texas children are not college ready when they graduate from high school. Two important statistics, consequences to be dealt with if you don't deal with the right things early on. How do each of your organizations work together to try to get some of those problems solved before they become real problems? Well, as you pointed out, brain development happens very early in the life of a child, even beginning prenatally. Mm -hmm. So what we focus on is trying to make sure that parents understand the critical role that they play uh, in interacting with their children, really focusing on both the social and emotional and cognitive development early on, not waiting until school for that to begin. So we, we really do focus on that critical interaction between young children and the important adults in their life. It's, when you talk about prenatal, that's amazing when you talk about how early it starts. And, yes. and then you're talking about just kind of making sure that the education is out there for parents to know what they should know about getting their kids in the right place at the right time in terms of their educational involvement. That's right. We're looking at the data and why are there so many children that are not college and career ready? And then we take that information, engaging parents, engaging school districts, and advocating at the local and state level to improve policies so that all children can be successful. We talk about getting early start. Early matters, I know, is a big program, a big initiative, and I think a lot of organizations have been involved in that. Talk about what what the impact is later on in life for those children who are involved very early in their educational process. Okay. Well, one of the things that we know is there are some critical milestones in the education of a child, and third grade reading is one of those critical milestones. So what we're trying to do early on is make sure children have access to opportunities to have people read to them early on, engage them in the whole process of language development so that when they enter kindergarten, they're ready and prepared to do well and past that critical milestone of reading well by third grade, because if they're not reading well by third grade, we know, and Mandy knows, that you're just much less likely, four times less likely, to be able to get to and through high school. And so many of the careers now in our Houston area require some post high school education. And you make yeah, the point, Mandy, about the being able to understand how to maybe be proactive on the legislative level. Uh, what is the challenge of trying to make sure that you can educate people about what kind of power they do have as it relates to advocating in Austin, for example, as far as our legislators are concerned? That is a great question, and I think people underestimate the power that they have to advocate for their children. And we saw during the 85th legislative session um, that more could be and should have been done around early education in regards to making sure 
that schools are properly funded, making sure that early education, um, that good quality standards are in place so that we can have a solid foundation. And not necessarily even for the early part, but just education in general in terms of funding, that's always high up on the agenda on the legislative calendar and somehow it get the can kind of gets kicked, doesn't it? It was extremely disappointing. There were some champions um, looking at school finance that really wanted to move the needle, but overall the legislature decided not to really tackle school finance. And unfortunately, they were distracted by other issues such as vouchers that would take funding from our public school system and bathrooms. What would you tell, uh, what kind of advice do you give parents. Uh, we get ready to start school now and they're going to get the kids corralling the cat, so to speak, uh, who've been so active during the summer. Now they have to settle down and get back into school again. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice do you guys give to parents who are trying to figure out the best way to kind of get that process going? Well, take advantage of existing resources that help you make those decisions. Um, Collaborative for Children has an excellent database on all of the early childhood options from childcare to Head Start to public pre-K. And so you can go online and just do a search and find out what are the options available for you based on the criteria that you set. Mm -hmm. um, I think also make sure that it's not just searching online, but going to visit particularly in childcare, the places that you're considering. If you have your top three or five list, you go and visit and to see whether or not the teachers are engaging in a loving and caring and nurturing way with the children. Um, you have to see it in addition to being educated before you go. M Mandy, children at risk us so much. Uh, you're across the state doing a lot of research about what's going on. Is there a handoff point where the kinds of things that Collaborative is doing is kind of handed off? Not, not in the real sense, but in terms of they do very early development, child, but you're doing it all the way through. Sure, well, Collaborative for Children is a fantastic resource for early education, and I encourage all parents to go to their website what we look at also is the public school system, kindergarten through 12th grade, and how are they performing. And we provide resources, grades actually, A through F, on how school overall is performing. And that is in hopes that their parents will use that tool to ask questions and get more engaged. Well, I, I want to give our viewers advice about where to go to get information uh, and what you need to do to get the best places for your child care, for example, and, and the best high schools in our region as indicated in the annual report by children at risk and how that was determined we'll deal with both of those answers after the break